and third. Is that vulnerable? Precarious? Well, if that mm. now, if you're looking at what I've seen this week, you know, I've seen Brentford rip Chelsea apart, and then I've watched uh, Real Madrid do a similar thing in, especially in the first half. Real Madrid were really good in the first half, and. And I don't think this Real Madrid is even close to some of the great Real Madrid teams I've watched. Mm-hmm. Um, defensively, they give you chances. They, they're they quite open. And yet they made Chelsea look pretty average. And a lot of Chelsea players are out of form. You know, you've got two forwards there now. You've got Werner and Lukaku cost the best part of £140 million. Probably cost them half a million pound a week in wages who are just so off the, the mark. Um, that neither of them can get make the first eleven. Mason Mount is the top goal scorer at Chelsea in the Premier League. Yeah. Now that's down. nothing against Mason, but his numbers are not that great. It's not like he's gone and got fifteen, eight. He's got eight goals. Their top goal scorer at the moment has got eight goals, and they're third in the league. To me, that doesn't that doesn't add up. That's that's not right. You can't be have a goal scorer got eight goals and be third in the league. But as you pointed out, so many Chelsea players' form has just gone off the boil, hasn't it? Uh, you know, you look at Chelsea a few months ago, they were top of the table, they were flying. Defensively it, as well. Yeah. You know, they weren't conceding. They've had no. seven goals in a week. Yeah, I, I um, can't... There's things that are confusing me about Chelsea. Well, they've got a really pivotal sort of next sort of week, if you like. Uh, well, Southampton today. Southampton today. Yeah. Then they've got Real Madrid to come in that second leg. And then they've got Palace in the FA Cup semi-final, let's not forget, before they then face Arsenal uh, at Stamford Bridge on uh, Wednesday, the 20th of April. So that could well turn out to be quite a defining fixture. Can I just add one more point? And this mm-hmm. is one thing I thought about after the game in midweek. And I hate to say this because I'm not sure... But have we seen the the end of sort of Angola Kante as a, the greatest midfielder, or one of the great midfielders in the last decade? Do you think so? I was very concerned with his... I've been concerned for a while about the amount of injuries he's picked up. And he is always running everywhere. He covers every blade of grass in a football game. And he's brilliant at doing it. And he's one of my favourite midfielders because he's the most unselfish midfielder you're going to see. It's everything for the team with Angola Kante. But I do feel like he's... He's played himself out physically. He looks a bit burnt out. I mean, midweek, he was up against a 37-year-old in Modric, Cruz and Casemiro. Not all of them as mobile as him, and yet he found it really... I I thought he was struggling. Mm. Whether it's injury, I hope it's injury and he can come back. But I I have looked at Angola in the last... Well, certainly last three months and four. I wonder if we've seen the best of him now. Is he starting to go a little bit on the wane? I hope I'm wrong. I really do, because he's been a terrific player. 